Hi all, Carl here. In a previous video, we took a look at 100% hydrogen operating on a Chevy 350V8. I also showed you hydrogen being used as a fuel in my turbo jet engine running at 40,000 RPM. In an upcoming video, I'll be showing you our gorgeous custom-built Cummins 6.7 turbo diesel. But today, we're here to highlight another aspect of hydrogen being used in different forms of combustion. Namely, everyday appliances that are used for heating your home, rooms in your home, even water for your shower. They're getting a lot of attention in discussions around the world about the safety of hydrogen being used in the home. Naysayers, hydrogen opponents, and electrification advocates make all kinds of preposterous claims against hydrogen to create misinformation, fake news, spread paranoia about hydrogen in their attempts to steer the narrative away from the uses of hydrogen with baseless claims of leaking hydrogen, explosivity of hydrogen, and hydrogen will create more deaths in the home. But I can assure you in my 14 years of producing and using hydrogen directly, this little wonder gas doesn't just suddenly explode mystically or leak out of pipes, level mountains, or set your home on fire. These kinds of claims are used as tools against the unknowing public to misguide the populace from seriously considering hydrogen as a clean, reliable, and safe home fuel. And today, we're going to prove it. I have here some appliances I have spent a lot of time with in modifying, testing, and operating on 100% hydrogen. As you saw in a previous video, Cooking with Hydrogen 101, my gas stove I converted to we're operating on 100% hydrogen. Here is another member of the family of appliances in the home that I modified for operating on 100% hydrogen. It is a gas-fired heater for producing hot water and showers in the home. This is an induction room heater that normally operates on propane, but I've modified it to run on 100% hydrogen. And here you have a typical flameless catalytic heater that, as some would have you believe otherwise, it doesn't spit fire and brimstone operating on 100% hydrogen. And this is a forced air heater that is used for construction sites and home building. And like the other heaters are to be used outside in well-ventilated rooms due to the potential of toxic carbon monoxide emissions generated using propane as a fuel. This is a typical propane torch used on construction sites, heating up metals in preparation for welding, burning weeds around the yard, or heating up frozen pipes. But this too is an outside tool due to the carbon monoxide emissions generated using it. What I have done with all of these gas operating devices is modified them to run on 100% hydrogen. This is not something that you can just go buy at a local hardware store and operate on this hydrogen. This is the result of my many years of experience working directly with hydrogen and knowing how to modify hardware, manifolds, valve controllers, regulators, fuel delivery systems, and feed lines to adjust for the differences of the energy densities, flame temperatures, flame velocity, combustibility, and knowing all too well all the potential risks in the entire equation from gas supply source to final combustion. And I can say with all honesty, using hydrogen as a fuel for combustion in home appliances is anything other than what hydrogen opponents are trying to convince the general public of. I'll use a perfect example and show you right here. Hydrogen opponents and many so-called experts will claim that hydrogen flame is invisible. Well, that may be the case in exceptional circumstances like low pressure, low flow rate, using a Bunsen burner in the lab. But that works off a of low pressure and low gas flow. So let me demonstrate. Here you have a typical Bunsen burner that you use in the lab. Now it's a small flame, small gas flow. But you'll at least get to see the point. So I'll turn it on as you heard that little pop. You see, it is burning because it's pushing the flame upward. Now watch what happens when you turn it up and the actual apparatus gets warm. You'll see the flame because it's burning the air molecules around the flame. This is not a typical flame that you're going to have in a power plant or a gas plant or something at home because of the low, low fuel flow rate and low pressure. It's going to be much higher pressure in any utility. This flame is anything other than invisible. And we have bright lights in the room, which is not really typical of what a power plant or 
a gas facility or at home is going to show. So you see, it's not that difficult to detect a hydrogen flame. Other people trying to disprove hydrogen will use a rocket launching fuel by liquid hydrogen as an example of how hydrogen flame coming out of a rocket engine is barely visible, apart from the white plumes of water vapor created from the combusting liquid hydrogen mixing with pure liquid oxygen. But when will you ever have liquid hydrogen burning at home? Never. So let's see what hydrogen combustion looks like during high combustion or high pressure and higher gas flow, like in this gas torch. This is usually made for running on propane, but I've modified it to run on hydrogen. So we have our gas set. Turn on the valve. And light this baby up. You see, there is a flame. It's easily detectable. And as I turn up the gas flow, up and down, you will see that flame go up and down also. Because what's happening is that the hydrogen coming out of the end of this torch is also burning the molecules in the air. That is easily detectable in some natural gas plant or power plant, or even at home on a furnace in the basement. Let me give this some more pressure. You clearly see that. You can see the ball valve going up and down according to the flame. This is coming right off of hydrogen. So you see, the naysayers who are trying to plant paranoia in the, in the mind of the populace, they're wrong. The flame in this torch is not producing any poisonous carbon monoxide nor any carbon dioxide. And you can easily see the flame regardless of what the fear mongers of hydrogen will have you believe. Also, it can literally be used indoors. Not that I would recommend torching your home plant weed growth indoors, but it's just an example of a gas combusting tool recommended for outdoors that can be used indoors if running on hydrogen. Now let's take a look at another type of combustion that is your everyday room heating device. A catalytic heater relies on catalyzed chemical reactions without flame to break down molecules and produce heat. Let's fire this up. It went woof. When the catalyst, the glowing red that you're going to see is the oxygen and the hydrogen combined with the catalyst, together they ignite at a low enough temperature that the flame is not needed. This process keeps repeating itself, heating up the catalyst until either the oxygen or the hydrogen fuel runs out. This is considered a safe way to heat indoors, but it still requires good ventilation to avoid carbon monoxide building up in the surrounding room. Now, let's look at two different space heaters that give off far more heat than a catalytic room heater. One is called the gas-powered induction heater. The combustion gas is inside, heats the surrounding galvanized metal casing by the internal flame. That projects the hot air outward at the top while heating a room. It's called a waste bucket induction heater due to the design. So let's fire this baby up. That's ignition from the piezoelectric starter. Now that it's warmed up, I can turn up the heat. I'll give it some more gas from the tank. You may be able to hear that and see the hot vapors coming out of the top. It's now starting to go old, and the casing is starting to get very, very warm. But you see how easy that is. Now, of course, this is modified to run on hydrogen, so this is not something that you can just go and fire it up. It's starting to glow red. So now let's look at this space heater. I'll shut this down, turn off the hydrogen, and you'll see how easy that is. The second heater is called a forced air gas heater. It works a little differently than the induction heater because the fan in the back that is connected to an external power source actually pushes the hot air across the room, thus heating a room much, much quicker. It has a combustion chamber here with the ignition system all the way in the back. 
Once that ignition system likes the incoming gas, then the fan is going to push the hot combusted air across the room. So let's give it a demo. Turn on the fan. That gives the power to the ignition. We'll light it up as you hear it. Let the thermocouple get heated up so it'll self-combust. Give it some gas. And as you can see, there is a flame inside. It is not invisible. That's getting very, very warm. You can probably see the glow from inside the reflection. Well, shut this off, turn the gas off. Turn off the fan and turn off the gas feed. Once again, between these two heaters, the induction heater and the forced air heater, very simple operation. Of course, they've been modified for hydrogen when they normally run on propane. Now, what's also unique about these heaters is they're classified as outdoor heaters, meaning you can use them inside of a very well ventilated room in construction sites or home building locations running off of propane. They actually create a lot more heat, a lot faster than a catalytic heater. Normally running off of propane, they create a lot of carbon monoxide emissions. Therefore, it's very dangerous to have them confined indoors where there isn't ventilation. But if they were redesigned for indoor use, for example, in the home, then you could operate these in your home without the fear of carbon monoxide poisoning. Now, of course, there's a flame on each one of these, and so they'd have to be carefully monitored. But with a new design, that could be overcome just by engineering. But using hydrogen in these devices, they can actually be brought indoors and heating up rooms with very, very little gas. These types of forced air heaters heat up a room very, very rapidly. So it only requires a little bit of hydrogen to keep the warm room. But without the carbon monoxide poisoning threat, you can now bring these items into the house of course, with direct monitoring of the operation. It is not something you want to walk away from because they do have flame. That creates a safety issue that must be recognized and catered to during the operation of either one of these heaters in a room or a home.